All right, so it is time to change the serpentine belt on the CRD. And I wanted to show you guys a mod that I did when I had this whole engine apart um, that makes it much easier. As you guys can see, I got these zip ties right here. And if you look a little closer, you can see that line. Um, and I actually cut the fan shroud in half, both on the top and on the bottom. Um, so you can actually take it off because if you can see in here there is like no room to get your hand in um, to do this serpentine belt I actually couldn't even imagine at all doing this without being able to remove uh, the fan shroud so let me take these zip ties out and I'll uh, show you guys how much more room there is snapped so I always keep extra extra ties on hand because they eventually dry out and fail especially working with one hand sometimes it's easier to just snip them The amount of extra room that you have to now work on this is is tremendous so um, I would highly recommend if you guys ever take the front of this apart if you're changing out you can see I put a new fan clutch on here um, but being able to take that fan shroud off in, in a couple of minutes just makes a huge impact on being able to access all of this and work on it So I'm going to get to uh, changing this belt and then after I do that it's time to change the fuel filter um, and I'm going to show you guys another mod that I did on this that actually makes this easier to change as well. So this uh, extended gear wrench is really nice for, uh, for changing out the serpentine belt as well because the tensioner is actually way down there um, and you can pretty easily get this on there and then uh, you got a lot of a lot of room to, to do what you got to do so um, I was originally doing it with a smaller wrench and kind of connecting two wrenches together to make it work um, and this is obviously just much easier
So this pulley here is basically the one that I leave till the very end to put on. It's always easier to stretch the belt over a smooth pulley. Um, so now I can just push the wrench over and pop it on. And there's pretty much no way for me to hold the camera um, while I do this. So now another nice thing about this long wrench too. Push that over. Get it on. Make sure the belt's on all the other pulleys. And she's good. It's on. And go give the ignition a little bump. Good to go. Nice and snug, no more squeaky squeaky. Change from the fuel filter. You actually have that little green connector on the bottom, which is actually for the water and fuel um, sensor. So that has to come off. Um, and then the can just spins off like a regular oil filter. This is one that just needs to be done by feel. Cause there's really no seeing it. But there you go, there's a little green connector. It's actually easier too to take these connectors off of here. I can remember what to push on. There we go, there's that one. It's always good to have a rag handy while taking this thing off too because it's pretty much going to spill some diesel. So another thing I like to do when I'm putting these on so you can remember when it was done at 1220 and actually this thing is just about to hit 200,000 miles and then I'll actually do that on both sides so that way no matter where it ends up after I spin it I'll be able to see it. So I totally forgot you have to take the sensor off the old one and put it on the new filter. Um, so I got to do that and then I'll spin this thing back on for the third time. Alright, last time. Let's get this thing threaded on here now. Tight, got the o ring seated. Give it one last snug. Okay, so we can pop our connector back on the bottom. these guys back on you have your little okay so you have your little bleeder screw right there and then you have this pump and from the factory these didn't come with an in-tank fuel pump 
So what you had to do, because you have to fill the fuel filter with fuel or else your car isn't going to run if there's air in it. So you have to pump this ball up, pump, 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 and then um, turn the bleeder screw and let a little bit out. But now that I have a fuel pump in there, what you can do is you can just open the bleeder screw and cycle the key on and uh, the fuel pump will just push all the air out of there. So I'm going to do that and try and not make too much of a mess. I usually just take a little solo cup um, and put it on there. So let me do it. All right, so now I can just crank the key and uh, get this thing going. I'm sure you can imagine how much harder it would be if you actually had to do all that pumping by hand. Snug this back up. And I think this baby should be ready to start. So my Frankenstein zip ties are back on and uh, I got one 10 millimeter bolt right down there and then another 10 millimeter bolt goes right in that flange on the other side and that's it belt change is done and uh, got the fresh fuel filter on there um, and for me I mean I carry a 10 millimeter um, on a little ratchet in the Jeep that way if I ever have to change the serpentine belt on the road I could pop that fan shroud off and uh, and get it done. I keep that long wrench in the Jeep, too so That uh, I don't know if you guys have ever taken the front of your CRD apart I would highly recommend cutting that fan shroud in half so you can get it out easier definitely a big shout out to uh, Lost Jeeps on the forum they talk about the fan shroud mod and that's definitely one way to do it um, and I like it it makes it a lot easier to get this little dirty diesel apart thank you guys for watching and I'll check you on the next one